Hi everyone, my name is Chris Fay. For this video, I'm going to talk about how I got the idea for hurricane crimes and my own personal experience with hurricanes. Now, it all started years ago when I was reading a book set during a blizzard. The book was excellent, I loved it, but I happen to think when I finished that I've read so many winter stories, but no stories set during weather that I knew, hurricane weather. See, I've never lived in a snowy state or continent, and I don't know what it's like really to be in a blizzard or a snowstorm or ice storm. All I know is the tropical storms, tropical storms and hurricanes and thunderstorms. You know, you get the idea. And I decided, why not write a story set during a hurricane? And right off, you know, I love the idea. I wanted it to be a romantic suspense, not just about a hurricane. And I didn't want it to be your typical romantic suspense. So I made the heroine's counterpart a suspected murderer. <laughs> That's a surefire way to spice up a story. <laughs> now, I have experienced many hurricanes, and the one that really impacted me and helped me while writing Hurricane Crimes was Hurricane Frances. She was a category four hurricane. She was the third major hurricane that hit in 2004, and she hit just three weeks after Hurricane Charlie. Now, Hurricane Frances, she inched her way to the Florida coast. And I remember just seeing all these gray clouds that overtook the sky, standing on my driveway with my hair and my skit, skirt just blowing in the wind. And I would look up at the sky and I would just see sort of this gentle circular motion, not like a tornado, but just, you can just see the clouds sort of moving in a big wide circle, the hurricane. And the wind got so strong that a neighbor's trash can went rolling down the road. This neighbor did not heed advice and put away trash cans. Of course, when a hurricane is coming, you want to put away all sort of outdoor lawn ornaments, trash bins, everything, so it does not become, you know, a danger to anybody or hit somebody's house or a window or a car. For the rest of that day, you know, I stayed inside just waiting for the hurricane to hit. I played dominoes and watched TV. And I actually remembered watching Dinotopia. <laughs> so random, but I just thought you should know. The TV went in and out while I was watching this movie. And I just remember cheering it on every time it came back to life and it stayed on. But that night, the winds became so strong that the transformer in my backyard started sparking. The glowing embers, you know, rained down into the darkness, and I just eyed it like it was a ticking time bomb. I knew eventually that transformer was going to go, and then I'd be without electricity, without light, for a long time. If they have to fix a transformer, you know, that takes power workers even longer than restoring power normal way. And not long after that, it popped with a blast of yellowish blue light and darkness draped over my house. During the night, rain dropped in heavy ribbons onto the roof and wind slammed into the boards covering the window next to my bed. Not a very good place to have your bed, by the way, next to a window, even if it's boarded. <laughs> and every time I heard the wind, hit that board, I woke up. And I woke up several times hearing loud banging noises like throughout the house. But every time I did wake up, I saw that the roof was still over my head and the walls were still standing. So I was relieved. 
Come morning, Hurricane Francis was gone, and in the light of the day, I could see that my neighbor's fence was flat on the ground, the roof over my porch was torn, and my garage door was crumpled. I spent over a week with my family without power. It was not fun. <laughs> I dragged my mattress to the middle of the living room and had all of the windows and doors open. The front door, luckily I had a screen door, and the porch door, where of course I had another screen door, I had them all open so I could get this really nice cross ventilation. And that really helped during the first day or two. Still some strong winds. But after that, when, you know, the storm was farther away, there wasn't much wind. It was very still. And that was just brutal when there was no wind at all. And there was just sun, no clouds, and it's just hot. Days after the storm passed, my sisters and I ventured into the city where we heard FEMA was handing out supplies. Driving down the deserted roads was surreal. There were no other cars anywhere. It just felt like that there was nobody in our city, which wasn't true. There were plenty of people still in our city, but they weren't around. They were still in their houses. And all of the lights on the way to the location where FEMA was, they were down. They were not working. And I remember at one of the intersections leading to where FEMA was, there were uniformed soldiers there helping to direct traffic and make sure that, you know, nothing got crazy with people being desperate to get supplies. We received MREs for my whole family. Now, MREs are meals ready to eat. They come in these thick brown plastic containers that you have to cut open and they have these it almost it's like astronaut food like these little containers um plastic containers with food and you have to put water in and this chemical heats up and some like steam comes out and that's how you heat up your your meal and you know, there was like some chicken meals, some pastas, and like meatloaf. But what I loved the most was the extra goodies that they had in the MREs, like um, the bread, like the flat breads, and this cheese. They had this really nice cheese spread, and I loved it. They also would include a dessert, like lemon poppy seed cake or some cookies. And I especially loved it when they had the, the red hot candies. I would eat those while reading a book in the lantern light with my battery powered radio so I could hear what was going on because I had no other connection otherwise other than that radio. Several days later, I think it I don't even remember. It could have been almost two weeks after we finally got our power back on. And they did, the power workers had to come into the backyard and fix the transformer. And that was the end of Hurricane Francis's reign. But I still have other experiences, such as with Tropical Storm Fay. Coincidence? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Tropical Storm Fay, while she wasn't as powerful, she made a big impact on me and on Florida. She made landfall on Florida four times, which made history. She released so much rain from her cloudy hands that the road and the field across from my trailer flooded, making it look like I lived on an island. I watched the water rise up and rise up and rise up closer to the top step. And it's funny, right when it got to that top step, it stopped rising. And 
I just kept watching it though because these cars and these trucks would come down the road and their wake would send the water clear over the top step because they weren't going very slow. And it was one of those times when I was keeping an eye on the water right there at the top step when I noticed something. A catfish was swimming around right by the top step of my trailer. And you know, it just, it made me laugh seeing that catfish. And then also I was a little worried and I remember thinking, you better go find a pond or something because when this water goes down, you're going to be screwed, little dude. <laughs> but that catfish, it seriously like made my day and, you know, inspired me. So I actually added a catfish into book two, Seismic Crimes. You'd have to read that story to find out just where the catfish comes into play. But Tropical Storm Faye, she stuck around for a very, very long time because obviously she just kept crisscrossing over the state of Florida. That's how she made landfall four times. She did not want to leave. And during that time, it was nonstop raining. I was stranded in my trailer for about a week writing and suffering from cabin fever. <laughs> Both of these storms greatly added to my imagination into my experience so I could use those for hurricane crimes. And you will find many parallels if you read hurricane crimes, such as with the garage door being crumpled, just like what happens to Beth's garage door. You will find many similarities between my personal story that I just revealed and the fictional story that I wrote. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.